What's up, everybody? True and I'm coming at you today with another Marvel Christ Protocol video, and this time we're going to talk about four leaders that I am really excited to play uh, in the next couple of months, well, the next year, probably, or the next couple of years. Who knows? I mean, the game is very, very exciting right now with the updates that just came out and the buffs that happened to, other, to a lot of characters in the game that really deservedly really needed it and the nerfs that happened to certain characters. The game feels refreshing again. The game feels, uh, you know, I'm, I'm basically making a whole bunch of rosters again. And, uh, I mean, it, it, I think it's I think it's the Wild West right now. And uh, I can't wait to talk about, like, these leaders and just why I'm excited to play them. But if you guys can, do me a favor. Like, dislike, comment, and subscribe. Do all those things y'all got to do. And, of course, I'm always going to have Marvel Crash Protocol content. I'm also part of the Danger Room podcast. Um, that link is down in the description down below. Um I know I'm not. I'm on that podcast with Jacob Deaton, Mike DeLuca, Sploosh, and uh, you know we talk about competitive Marvel Crisis Protocol, give advice to players, uh, or any pop, you know hot topic that's going on with Marvel. Definitely give a listen to that to the podcast. We do a really good job there, guys, with with with, with podcasts and all that stuff. So definitely do that. All right. So with that being said, we got all that crap out of the way. <laughs> Some out of the way. We're gonna talk about. The leaders that I'm very the most exciting, the most excited to play in October and moving forward. Um, and I'm definitely gonna have some match videos uh, soon. Uh, you know, I'm almost you know I've been just a little bit busy with everything right now, and uh, you know things are starting. To, my schedule starting to clear up a little bit, so stay tuned, guys. I'll have some match videos coming up. Uh, I might just hit the LFG channel on Discord and just play some matches and get those recordings in and showcase what these leaders can do so let's talk about the first one right cyclops the big one of the big memes in marvel christ protocol obviously i mean he was you know wasn't it really a good character i mean that was my opinion back in 2021 when he first came out um you know but he got much needed buffs that he needed he's not a joke anymore he actually has a leadership and he's really exciting to play and i have played at least i played one game with him so far in person and let me tell you something he feels great, and he feels absolutely fantastic. The push size three is amazing. The ricochet speed of light is absolutely fantastic. Um, I'll say this, like, the, the leadership is absolutely nuts. The fact that you can hand power to other characters, and it's like, you know, it's one character per turn. It's very, very similar to uh, how Magneto's leadership works, and let me explain why. Um... Obviously, Magneto's is break terrain, hand out of power. Well, with this one, is just do a damage, hand out power. And that power generation that you're handing out, I'm just going to be honest. I really don't care if I daze or KO the characters in this game. I mean, granted, it, that's very important to do. And I'm not saying that, you know, whatever. But what I'm saying is even though you don't do that, you're getting rewarded, right? You're, you're handing out this power to other characters that need it. And um, I had a really crazy turn one the other day. Uh, with, um, well, last week with Cyclops, I moved up, shot a character, I pulled off the trigger, and I also did two points of damage. I got the push off as well to push a character off a point, and from there, I was able to hand a power to, uh, the new Wolverine, and, uh, what then that opened up from there was I gained two power, right, and I handed one to Wolverine. What I was able to do then is field leader up Wolverine, and then, you know, help him out, move up the board just a tight, just a tiny bit. And he was able to charge that same character because of the field leader that helped him out. It was absolutely insane. And to keep in mind, this is a character per turn. So let's say, for example, I hand the power to Wolverine because you can't double dip in a turn, right? What do I mean by that? Let's say, for example, Cyclops did two attacks, right? I can't go and give Wolverine two power. It has to be another character. With this leadership on my next turn... If I wanted to give Wolverine another power, I can do so with another character, you know, doing a damage or whatever, and then just handing a power to Wolverine again because it's another turn, right? It's not per round, it's per turn. So I can potentially get Wolverine up to three power. What that will what that will end up doing is possibly, especially on an F extract, what that will end up doing is have it, it'll have Wolverine be able to pick up the extract and still have two power left to charge. So this leadership is really nuts, and it gives me, like, flashbacks to uh, Magneto with that whole hang the power off and all of that kind of stuff. And 
it's a very fun leadership, and he's very fun to play. Um, I will say this, like roster building for X-Men, I feel like there's a ton of four threads you want to take with them, um, especially just revolving it around Cyclops' leadership, and you're always trying to keep affiliation and all that. Um, I have to get a little more creative with the roster building because I don't think I can have that many four threads, to be honest with you. I like having some threes and mixing that in. You know, um, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll get to my rosters at some other video, at some other point in time, but just to say that. But he is absolutely exciting to play and i can't wait to just get games in and i'll just, just record it and just show you guys what i'm talking about second one you guys know you know i i was i am kind of still <laughs> a spider falls player even though i play brotherhood brotherhood's my main and they will always be my main okay right now brotherhood's my main Right now, Cyclops is the side. <laughs> okay. And 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 Spider Foes are right there in the mix right now. Okay. So I kind of have like three teams that I want to play. And it and it's exciting. I just don't have one anymore. I have three that I'm really excited about. This one uh with Spider Foes is really intriguing to me. Um obviously this is a better, you know, this is a four threat Doc Ock that we're getting in the uh core set, the new core set's coming out October 13th. Um you know, he has a size three throw now. It's range three. We all know that. We got the buff there. Um, but the leadership is really interesting. Uh, so once per turn, after a character is targeted by an attack, but it's not natives, you gain a power. So I think this is a really strong effect. Um, I think, um, you know, I think of characters like Rhino, who gains that extra power, um, who can do a lot of crazy things, especially if he's not getting dazed. Um, so I think, in my opinion, if you're playing tanky characters in this game that have the reduction and, uh, you know, that, that want to be up there and want to be taking damage and all that other kind of stuff, this leadership is going to help them out. And uh, I think of other spider Force characters that, that this can help out as well. I think of characters like Venom. Uh, granted, I mean, the way to play against Venom, you control him, you throw him around, you do what you need to do. But if those characters aren't around to deal with him, well, if you play Venom, uh, you got to think about this. You can have a turn where you take, you know, he takes an attack um either from a lethal protector or from whatever the case may be um he jumps in takes the attack and uh you know takes a couple points of damage if he doesn't get dazed he gains an extra one so what that could end up doing is like you know getting him to so many snacks a little faster um possibly to the spender not saying it will i'm just saying it's it's possible um you know things like that think of characters like that um that can benefit from this extra power generation from the spider Fills perspective perspective. And, uh, it's really interesting. I think the key to playing this new doc Ock, and I have not played a game yet, but I think the key to this is keeping him as safe as possible, having him sit in the background because you want to use his leadership and just have the other guys move up and just have them, you know, take the damage and, and then have Doc Ock just kind of sitting in the wings and waiting for opportunities, you know, to get his throw off or to do his beam four, which hands out the incinerate and all the kind of stuff. There is another condition. There is also another part of this leadership, which I really which I really do like. Additionally, once per turn, when an ally character suffers damage from enemy effect, after the effect is resolved, it may remove one of the spell following special conditions. Shock, slow, incinerate. These are really strong um, conditions uh, to put on a character. The other thing is, too, what makes this really strong is that... In Marvel Crisis Protocol, if you want to remove a condition, you have to waste an action, right? So if you don't have a card that removes a condition, well, you're kind of you're kind of screwed. Or you have another character that can remove it, or whatever the case may be, you're going to spend an action removing it. So shock has been prevalent for a long time. You know, characters like Dynamo and like, uh, of course, Star Lord. I think Star Lord hands out shock. There's other characters, uh, Thor, who recently got buffed, hands out shock as well. Um, yeah. So I mean. The fact that if I don't, you know, if I suffer damage, I can just remove a condition. That's really cool. Um, you know, if I can remove a slow from a character that moves long, I mean, that that's really beneficial. Um, so removing a condition uh, just for taking the damage, that's really strong, at least in my opinion. So uh, that's Doc Ock in a nutshell. That's the second leadership that I'm really excited to play. Let's think about the third one here. Let's go with uh, Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, you guys know me. I don't play a lot of Avengers. I haven't played Avengers in a really long time. Uh, actually, no, that's not true. A couple of weeks ago, I was playing with Sam Spam and uh, giving them a run and uh, running Jacob Deaton's list, basically, uh, with a little a twist that I put in there. Um, and just, you know, figuring it out, like how, you know, how this plays and, and all that other kind of stuff. Um, not the biggest Avengers player. But 
I am a fan of Steve Rogers. <laughs> I just haven't been a fan of how he plays in the game, to be honest with you. The whole like bodyguard, and it's not to say he's not good or anything. That's not the point. It's the his play style wasn't too much of a fan of. I love his leadership. It was just him sitting back and bodyguarding and all that. Nah, I kind of wanted Steve to get in there and fight. This one wants to get in there and fight a little bit. Um, he's got the shield bounce, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but the leadership is absolutely bananas, right? I played this at uh, Gen Con this year, and I thought this was absolutely nuts. The fact that I could change any result... Let's just read this for a second. Once per turn when an allied character is attacking during the modified dice step, if there are one or more re hit results in the attack roll, it may spend one power. If it does, change one of its results to any other result. Now, the minute I read, read this, I'm like, this is nuts, right? Now, granted, this is once per turn, so you can't just keep doing this. You have to pick a time when it's beneficial to you to proc this. Uh, but I think of a lot of characters that have crazy triggers. Uh, I One that comes to mind is Medusa. I think Medusa with this leadership is absolutely nuts. It, it kind of just puts her back to where she was in like 2021 when she was really toxic and really damn good. Uh, um, getting a flurry and getting a push is insane. It's an insane amount of value for one power cost, okay? Um... I, there's just so many characters that have tricks. I mean, Hawkeye handing out conditions, you know, getting a hit on, you know, five or six dice is pretty easy to do. Um, and you should be popping this leadership almost every time. I'm not saying you're going to get it all the time, but like the majority of time you're going to get it. And the amount of shenanigans you could do is, is absolutely sick. Um, and then propping and then honestly popping his triggers. I mean, he's got some really crazy triggers here that he can put that he can do as well. Um, so it just it's just a it's it's nuts, right? And I can't wait to build a team with just crazy triggers with him and just go nuts, right? Um really exciting stuff. I'm really excited to play Steve in in this uh in the ne in the next couple of months. So, uh let's get to this one right here. Now, Red Skull, this one scares me, but it also excites me. <laughs> Red Skull himself is a really interesting character. He has some really crazy shenanigans like he could spend another character's power or something like that to do a superpower or whatever the hell he's doing. Like, he's got a lot going on in Scar. We're not going to go through all that. We're just going to go through the leadership and talk about why I think it's nuts. Um, once per turn, while a non-grunt character is rolling dice, and thank God, um, as a part of attack roll, it may treat one fail result as a crit. Now, we know how crazy popping crits is in this game. You know, there are characters that come to mind like uh, Domino, uh, Corvus, who recently got buffed because the gem is not restricted anymore. Um, Malekith, of course, who was just a terror on the table, uh, still kind of is a terror on the table. Um, popping crits from fail results is strong. It is very, very, very strong. And when I played this at Gen Con, or played against this at Gen Con, it was annoying how often this effect was going off. It was annoying how much damage it was potentially doing. And all I can say is, is this. Thank God this is once per turn along with Steve's leadership. Thank God it is. Because if this wasn't, this, this leadership has the potential of just tabling people. Because of the amount, because of the consistency that you're getting with this. And the extra dice and all that stuff. Just imagine the characters that you, I mean, it's just insane what you could do with this so let's read the rest of it uh if it does after the attack is resolved the attacking character loses one power if it does not lose power it suffers one damage instead so there is a um uh, there's a penalty there's kind of a penalty for it right so you have to lose a power um you know or if you don't you just take damage or whatever the case may be so uh you know this helps out characters that you know it just roll average dice and if they roll a fail result they can make their hits a little more consistent um you know i think of characters like you know ford i build ford i gainers things like that um i think of characters that can pop crits i mean domino comes to mind uh corvus comes to mind i mean if i can pop two crits in a turn uh why not i mean this just makes corvus absolutely disgusting in the game um malika of course i mean he can use it i mean granted you ask yourself well why would i double dip i mean why not double dip um this is free basically i mean you yeah, you lose a not free but you lose a power but the amount of damage that you could potentially do in game back like it's sick and if i don't have to spend the power from malika and i can save the power well it's whatever right so i think of a character like that uh corvus as well 
Um, Domino, right? Domino pops crits on her own as well, too. And then she could just use this effect and just do all kind of nutty, crazy things. Um, the amount of, I mean, just the attrition alone from this. <laughs> and him as a character. Like, Red Skull as a character is really interesting, actually. So, um, I can't wait to build a list around this, too, and just seeing what it, what it can potentially do. Like, and how nutty and crazy it actually is. Um, because when I played against it, I thought it was insane. Um, it, I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, and not in a bad way. It was just like, it was really, it was just strong. Um, and, um, and that was just my first impression. So, uh, but yeah, guys, that's it for me. Um, that's all I got today. A little short video. Just wanted to talk about, about four leaders that I'm excited to play. Uh, I think in the next one, I, next video, I'm probably going to build, well, I don't know if this is in the, uh, the mod yet. So whenever these cards get in the mod, I have to double check. Maybe they are in the mod. If they are, I'm probably just going to go ahead and, um, uh, make some rosters. Uh, what I think uh, will be good for uh, Cyclops, um, Red Skull, Captain America, and why am I drawing a blank? Doctor Octopus. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can build a roster for those four, and uh, that'll be my next video. And uh, yeah, if you guys can give me your thoughts down below, tell me what you guys think of these leaders. Are you excited to play them? Are you not excited to play them? What do your rosters look like with these characters, man? Give me talk to me in the comment section down below. Subscribe, do all those things. I'm trying to get to a thousand guys. Help your boy out, and I'm always gonna have Marvel Christ Protocol content. Y'all take care and have a wonderful blessed day.